All right. I, I think once in a while I need to establish boundaries. I know I'm in an area that is like the whole mystical, religious, all that kind of stuff. But this channel and me, I have a very incredibly analytical, science-based brain. Any amount of mind reading that you're doing or any kind of hits you're getting from the cosmos, this is not your channel. Okay, I, I don't even know what to do with that. People that have psychic abilities, you, you are either liars or you are incredibly delusional. Period. Okay, there are things that happen that look like they're psychic. I've had my own experiences, but they're not unnatural. They are natural. And there's a way to explain them. And if you want to interact with them better, you need to understand what they are. And if you think they're supernatural entities out there doing something, that you're going to just continue to get mild little hits and make up stuff in your own head and hear everything that you want to hear coming from your own head. And it might seem like it's coming from out there, but it's not. This is a channel for finding truth and reality. When you say you're talking to God and getting hits, this is not your channel. The psychic network is somewhere else. <laughs> okay, well, let me talk about what, what I experienced. Because we all have things that you might go, that was kind of bizarre. How did that happen? How did I know? How did this link up? How did, how did, how did? We all have those happen. Some have a little bit more and some less. Many people just say that's just coincidence. We're doing so many things throughout the day that out of the billions of things you do, there's a couple of crossovers and they, it's just coincidence. I have had things happen that I realized they're not coincidence. And I'm going to talk about one of them right now. Um, th this is a very important one. It's actually, it was a tragedy. It, when I was young, my brother committed suicide. Um, I was nine years old. He was 11. And the way that this worked out is that he hung himself in the woods, but I was in the house helping my younger brother learn his ABCs. He was about four or five, and I'm doing that rote A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, kind of helping him, um, just training his brain to remember that. And as I'm sitting there, the house is, we're in an abusive home, and I, I know that I'm not, I don't want to disobey because I know that I will um, I would suffer a whipping with a belt and, but I see my mom in the living room reading the newspaper and I feel, I just, I don't know why, but something just wants me to leave the table. I didn't think about that till later. I just remember back later, God, that's what the hell that was. Cause I remember sitting there just real, uh, I would look back on it going, I don't know what happened, what drove me. Anyway, I'm going to the, I'm sneaking out. My brother went to the bathroom. I thought, okay, he won't say anything. So I go sneaking out the back door. And just as I'm reaching, I'm, I'm putting my jacket on. It's a fall day, November, cold. Just as my hand goes through the jacket sleeve, it felt like a palm hit my forehead. It, it was a physiological response. Nobody's there. I'm at the back door getting ready to open it. I'm just reaching for the doorknob. But these two words hit my head. So matter of factly, it stopped me in my tracks and it felt just incredibly real. Larry's dead. And uh, I shook that off. I was like, oh, that's crazy. And I went out and within, within a minute, I found my brother hanging in the tree dead. Okay, that would be called clairvoyance or something like that. That was not a, that was not a, um, an accident. That was not a coincidence. That was something different. I look at that and go, what was that? That is supernatural, isn't it? People would tell you, God came and was trying to warn you. Meanwhile, I'm like, yeah, you don't know my story. We've been praying to God for our entire lives as long as we could remember to please come and help us. Why would God suddenly show up now after my brother kills himself just to tell me Larry's dead? Thanks, God. All those years you didn't come and help, and now you show up to tell me something that I'm about ready to find out anyway? Nope, that didn't make sense. People said it was your brother, Larry, his spirit coming and telling you. And right off the bat as a kid, I was like, I didn't know, I didn't know the words then, but I do today. The words came to me in third person. My brother would not have said to me, Larry's dead. He would have said, hey, Danny, I, I made it to heaven like I thought I'm here. I'm something somewhere. It wouldn't have been Larry's dead. So what happens later on is you're going on in life and you learn things. And here's what you understand. Carl Jung, collective psyche, all sides. We are living in a collective. And what this collective is to me is a 
that what, what, what we can sense is emotion. All right. This is what I'm, what I'm thinking that we have five senses and we know what those are. We can see, taste, smell, touch, all that, but that there's one more sense that we evolved with. And that was the sense of feeling a, a sense of danger or a sense of joy. You know how to test that field. We can test it. We can interact with the collective psyche. Do you know how it works? Do you know how we see the emotional transmit? Have you, uh, this and that hasn't happened to me, but I, I've had situations like this. I'm going to describe one of worship. Most people have at some point in time been involved somehow in something, some way where you're in a group of people that are like at some point in time rejoicing, singing, lifting, praising something, something somehow. And within this group, this swelled feeling begins to emerge. It's a more uplifting feeling than you can get on your own. It's because you're in a collective where everybody is feeling this and it just becomes much bigger. This would be a group dynamic feeling that is a good feeling, isn't it? You can get that in church and people in church will say that's the power of God. It's the Holy Spirit. It depends on what your belief is. Some people believe the Holy Spirit is out there. Some people believe the Holy Spirit is in here. So, so it depends on where you come from. To me, uh... That field, though, is evidently there. And here's the, here's the other side. Watch people go to protests and start doing things over the top that they would never do on their own. They get caught up into the negative as much as they get caught up into the positive. We can all do that. You can go and interact with that field and pull away from it. You go to church next time you go to church and that starts happening, it's going to happen again. It will happen every time. We can see and interact with that feel. You can't put an O-scope on it and measure it, but you can feel it. That's showing us what is there. That would help drive uh, us through an evolutionary process. If you're a creationist, yeah, this is not going to work for you. You're not going to understand anything. Okay, so we evolve fear. We know what to stay away from, and we remember that fear. And the fear, it will kill us. So it's very violent fear. We maintain that. So, and so f we, we sense that though. Okay. So we're sensing this field. We can kind of sense creatures creeping up on you. Maybe if you didn't have that sensation, you'd just be sitting there like a, like something getting pounced on all the time and gobbled up. You're always alert. You're always looking around. You're always watching. Go, just go watch the videos on people, you know, that are like a, like the, the Jane, uh, the, you know, the people that were like observing chimps, monkeys, gorillas, things like that, and watch their activity and, and imagine coming up through something like that. They're protected though, but I mean, you can get five videos out there, of chimpanzees ripping apart monkeys, catching them and then killing them and ripping by ripping them apart and, and sharing the, the food. That's life. We came from there. We sense that and we feel that and we still do today. We now have communications. We now have thought. Okay, so I'm sitting there at the table. I realize later, my brother stepped off the stump. He didn't die instantly. He had a short period of time where he was probably calling out to me mentally. That's what I'm sitting at the table. Going, I don't know what's going on. Something is like trying to pull me. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to disobey and get beat. And I don't know why I realize, okay, I was stuck at the table not knowing, but that was probably the time he was dying and, and trying to, Danny, please come and help me. I changed my mind. I, there, was no, there was no branches. There was no, the rope diameter was too small. Looking back on it, once he was there off the stump, he was committed to that. There was no way out for him. And if he thought something differently, I think that's what happened. And that the cosmos and in that energy field and that myself, that, 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 that death was already known. It wasn't in my consciousness, but it's in the cosmic field. It's not unnatural. It's something that is there. It's a, it's, it's at a quantum level. We know a lot more today than then. We don't have to call these ghosts and spirits. This is him reaching out to me. And then my brain is the one that said, Larry, I knew Larry and I knew dead. That's where the Larry's dead came from. The knowledge of his death was already there and the words came to me in my head. That was not magic. And once I realized that's what's going on and how to interact with that, it works a lot better than me saying, oh, I'm getting talked to by ghosts and spirits and magical things like that. Those aren't there. If, if that's who's talking to you, do you see them? Do you interact with them? These are things that happen sporadically. You don't have control over them. And there are Certain brain types, feelers, sensors and feelers, 
You know, Myers-Briggs brain types, everybody has different brain types. Okay, this is very important. The people that say, yeah, there's nothing different about you are the grunts. <laughs> Seekers have a different kind of a brain type. You have to know for sure. You don't just listen to, oh, they said this, they said that. You're the one that's going, no, let me see. I need to know for sure. I'm more sensitive. I can't stand in the group. I evolved to be just kind of on the outside of the group. I still need the group. I can't go away, but I'm the first line of defense. I'm more sensitive. I'm higher. I can't stand the group. I'm too sensitive. But out here, it's perfect because I can sense that lion sneaking up before anybody else can. And then when I yell, lion, everybody runs. They don't, they don't, they don't turn and go, hmm, let me make sure. I'm the one that goes, let me make sure. They're the ones that just goes, okay. So most of the people are just responders. There's other people that are like, man, I need to know what's going on. So the people that need to know what's going on, you're going to find that you have a better capacity to sense these things because you are more open to it. You will also find that you loud noises, uh, things like that. You um, getting in office environments where it's like loud and raucous all the time. You can't stand it. You're the kind of person that's going to have a better, do better at sensing those things. But people that are looking at those things and going, wow, yeah, Larry's dead. Okay. Now what's happening here is I'm talking to God. I got a direct line with God talking to me. And it's like, you know what? That is not what happened. You're grabbing the supernatural material and thinking that this is what it is. There is something inside the supernatural material that you don't know. And it is natural. Now let's talk about supernatural. We got a universe with universal laws. If you say something is in here that is supernatural, think about that. You're something out here that is not beholding to the laws of the universe. It's somehow outside the laws of the universe. And I will tell that to people that go, no, 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 no. That's not it. You just can't see it. And then I, then I say, then why the hell do you call it supernatural? Why don't you say it's natural? We just don't know what it is yet. When you call it supernatural, you have given it a title and a name and said, there, it's, it's, it's been identified, it's done, and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, that's not a science brain there. That's a theist brain. A science brain goes, what the hell are you interacting with? Oh, this is happening between us, not between something out there. And if you want to make it work, you need to understand what's happening here, not out there. This is where it occurs from. And when you, when you're little kids, remember when you're a kid, think back on it. Deja vu. You could, you could look at the door and go, uh Oh, mom's about ready to come in. Poof, door bust open. These little things would happen all the time. Eventually that quits. Okay. What's happening is we are living through a higher awareness. There is something there, but we don't have the brain capacity, the cognition to know that or to comprehend it. So we just live life experiencing. We don't, we need to experience life. We don't know what to do. We need to eat a banana. We don't even know what yellow is or what sweet is or what banana is or anything when we're little kids. We have so much to learn before we can start doing anything in life. And as we do, we begin living through those memories. What are they? You're a, you're a wonderful child. How oh, you do so well. I'm proud of you. Shut up, you stupid piece of shit. I'm going to beat your ass. Fucking retard. How did you grow up? You're going to become that. And you're going to be living through those memories and all of those little things that used to happen are gone because that, because that, that part of our brain is still there. All of that is, everything is in place, but now we've clogged it up with life's memories. This is the moat in the eye. Within that time frame, we're still going to be having things happen. And you're like, what is this? What are these little magical hits? That's still the way humans work in a collective, in a collective psyche. That is still happening. However, it becomes very clogged up and we judge it incorrectly. Now we're, we're, we're looking through the filters of our own experiences. We're no longer judging things openly or accurately. And that stuff kind of falls apart. Once you clean out that stuff, oh, you know what? I'm not a piece of shit. And, and you who told me that over and over again, man, you know what? I'm sorry that happened to you too. I thank you for giving me my life and giving me an opportunity to rise above that. I don't hate you. I realize what happened. I'm just part of the I'm just next in line and it's up to me to escape that and get out of it. So we're looking for ways to get out of our hurt feelings that we have got wired in our brain that we're living through. And as long as we're living through those, that psychic stuff stops that it, it's not psychic. It's natural, normal. You got people talking to your relatives. You're talking to a nutcase. You're talking to a ripoff artist. If they're charging you and if they're not, you're talking or if they believe that, yeah, they're, 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 there's something wrong. 
there is something wrong with people that are talking to spirits. Um, it doesn't mean that they aren't getting something or that they aren't getting good information. There is a collective psyche. Here's something else that happens. You get all the research I do. I am looking for things sometimes that I'm like, I don't get what this is. There's something weird right here. I don't get it. I'll pour over things. I look at a couple of other things. I let it go. And within a day or two, something comes to me or you open up the book and you're like, damn, that's it. Okay. Seek and you will find knock and it will be open. What I think is happening is that the curiosity of the brain, when it has that pull to it, it's like, man, if whatever the, the, the brain, you kind of flow along the path of your brain. Now, when you have an intense desire for this knowledge, which is real easy to get, it's right here, it's right in front of you. And it's a part of your life experience. It's going to come to you. If you, if you have it with intensity, anybody, it's going to happen to anyone. If you sit there and you have this intense desire to know something and you're really studying and it's not coming to you, maybe there's something in the way. But when you get into it and everything is clogged out of the way, you'll find that all the time. I don't know what this is. Give it a day or two. Okay, now I know. I don't know what this next was. Next one is. Give it a day or two. Okay, now I got it. I don't know what the next one is. That'll keep happening over and over and over again if you keep doing it. And you'll go, huh, this cyclical stuff is normal. It's natural. Okay, so I want to say that, that there is something out there. There is no part of it that is supernatural. If it is, if, if there is something out there operating and functioning, then it is not supernatural. It is natural. We don't know it. We don't know what it is yet. Don't use supernatural terms with me. I mean, I, I can use the term, but I, I mean, don't use it in a way that I am, I have supernatural capacities and I can talk to spirits of dead people and things like that, or I can get direct downloads from God or whatever. It's like, yeah, get away from me. I got solid material up here to work through in a science brain. And I'm not, I don't know why people get in. Oh, this guy's doing some Bible stuff. Maybe it's, maybe we can go get into all kinds of magic and miracles and Harry Potter stuff. Bring your magic wand. This is real shit here. Okay. Humans. And, and for the person that said psychology emerges kind of after from spirituality, let me tell you something. I, I, unless you're a creationist, I don't know. Human psychology was in place on the savanna before humans even had communications. Fear and joy is human psychology. If you think psychology is secondary to spirituality, you haven't turned inward and you haven't found the path. You're on the outside. You're clinging to the religion or something else. You turn inward, drop all that stuff. God is the higher freaking awareness. If you want to work with, I know this is a little animated. I'm kind of talking to somebody right now. <laughs> okay. If you want to work with people and tell them how to work with this material, they do it in their mind. God is the higher awareness in Jewish material. Jewish material, Christian material, Muslim material is only unique in the way that it's carried, the way that it's wrapped up, not the way that it is structured on the template. You don't know what that template is. You just have to take my word for it. But at some point in time, you have to get away from all that stuff and say, you know what? There's one core reality in humanity, and it doesn't occur in the individual religions that occurred here or here or here on the planet. It occurred before the religions ever showed up. What humans operate with is before religion. You got to get there. Religions, however, people back then, they knew this. They saw this. They knew this was working. That's what this package is. And if you're still doing the supernatural stuff, you haven't interpreted it. You're still on the outside. Okay. This is for people who get it. You get away from all that stuff and understand that when I'm reading somebody's mind, it's because we are connected in a a uh, that we are in a collective, that we're linking up in a certain way. And you know what? All day long, you miss all kinds of stuff. My wife and I, we used to laugh about how, how much time somebody would sit we're on a long drive and suddenly somebody says something and you're like, that's obscure. And I was just thinking that same thing. At some point, we don't even laugh about it anymore. We just sit there and realize, you know what? We're kind of sitting in the field and sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when things are right, we're just, we just start sharing the same, we're sharing the same thoughts right here because we're in this field and we're picking, we got a, a central nervous system. We got our eyes, which help us to see, nose, to smell, all, all those, our five senses. The central nervous system is the, the eye, nose, it's the element, the, the, 
the um, the radiating or receiving element in the human body that exists in this field. That's why we have sensations. No, oh, it feels good. That must be spiritual. Yeah, you know what? That's because your brain is just right. Make your brain go wrong and it's no longer spiritual anymore, is it? We're dealing with emotions and the way that the brain and thinking and conflict or non-conflict in the brain and electrochemical brain creates our flow in this cosmos. And if you don't understand that, you're not going to learn how to interact with it better. You are there all the time. You are in the flow. I remember people doing some Tao stuff one time and people were like, how do I get into the Tao? You know what? You're in the Tao. <laughs> you're never out. What you want to do is change the way you flow in the Tao. I, I, I got it. I got a bad life. You're in the Tao. Does it happen every day? All the time? Yeah, that's the way you're flowing. You want to change that? You have to change the way the brain is, the way the thinking is, and let other things manifest as a result. Okay, I wanted to say this. There is some, there's some, some stuff here, but I don't want to focus on that. If you, if you get this stuff cleared out of your mind, if you get, if you get the moat out of your eye, you know, you know, it's weird. You know what? I've been down a lot of rabbit holes. I know about all these things. How about the pineal gland that it gets calcified because of fluoride in the water or something? All right. I live in a place where they don't put fluoride in the water, but it occurs naturally. It does prevent cavities. But um, okay. So here's the deal. The pineal gland observes light day cycles and regulates melatonin for sleep. It is not a psychic eyeball. Let me say this. Do you know the Gaia channel? There will be nothing, nothing resembling the Gaia channel here. Okay. There's no listening to something to change your frequency and elevate your, this is right to the core material. This is where you come from. Go study Buddha. Okay. Grab the Dhammapada. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. It's founded on our thoughts. It's based on our thoughts. Go to an expert that's teaching in plain language instead of making up stuff. The eye is the perception. You start off without an eye because you don't even, you can't even see. You can't think. You can't, we don't have, we don't, we can't process. How old were you before you can re even remember? Four, five, six years old, couple things spot here. Then it starts picking up later. We are not even developed yet. We have to develop for a number of years before we have the brain capacity to start functioning in life. We're totally helpless. You can cry and have all kinds of pain, but you look back. I got circumcised. You know what? I don't remember it. I'm sure I cried. You know, there's things that happen there that you're like, Phew. I know I reacted physiologically to it, but I have no mental recollection of it. Oh, and yet there are things that happened in the past. Well, that's somewhere else. That's something that came from, uh, Another source. So, so I, that it's a healing process. It gets really deep. There is a, a need to clear this out though. With clearing out the eye, clearing out the third eye is clearing out the bundle of perceptions that you're living through. Not taking the fluoride out of your water. That's not going to, that's not going to make your life better. The world is, people have got such crazy ideas and then they grab it. Somebody says something like, Oh, I like the sounds of that. Then they're a part of that system and nobody's even looking at it. They're just believing something that somebody else came up with because I got, man, this is, a, that, that couldn't have been a coincidence. I'm psychic. I'm psychic. Everybody. Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> or everybody is. <laughs> All right. So this is very much science based. And when you figure out what it is, psychology, it's psychology, and when the psychology is done, a healing takes place, life improves, and all that connected stuff that we have going on, even it works better. I can look back on my brother's suicide today and realize we came from a place of abuse and a belief that, that we were somehow bad, but that, but that by believing in Jesus, that we would go to heaven when we died. But that there was so much abuse and, and what happened is that Larry died. He took his own life. And if I look back on what it would have taken to enter, to, to prevent that, it would not have taken God or Jesus. It would have taken psychology. And you don't need somebody else to go get the connecting for you. If, if that's happening, you're talking to people that I, I, I don't even want. Yeah. I don't know how I get approached sometimes by people who think, man, you, oh, you got some magical stuff going on. Let's play Harry Potter. 
this is serious freaking stuff here. There is something in there that if you can't see it, then just watch. <laughs> Let me keep finding it. All right. I want to say that because of just recent things. And, and, and I think it, it's hard for people sometimes to understand what I'm doing. Okay. The supernatural, the miracles, all those kind of things. I get all of that stuff. I know that that can happen, but most of the time it does not. We grab the instances that it does and go, look, it's perfect. We don't, we don't gather up the billion times that it didn't work. We grab one data point and say, there it is. We don't grab all of the data points and go, that was a fluke. Because the same kind of healing happens on an average around the world, whether you believe in God or not. Okay, so I've been on this path. I've taken the path. I've gone through the healing. I've gone through the forgiveness. And I've seen the changes. And I've seen the improvement. I've seen the life change. I've seen the mind change. I've seen the connectedness that we have with each other in an accurate way all change as a result of healing my life experiences. There are people that probably have grown up that, you know, that other person that was, that was not, you know, that was nurtured in a different way. So they grow up with us. Their brains are already confident and they feel good. They don't have a bunch of crap in there that, that they have to resolve a bunch of beliefs, a bunch of pain. Those people might already have a natural capacity. I don't know. I, I'm not that person. I'm the person that was really hurt and had to make the improvements. So anyway, I want to say, based on firsthand experience, whatever magical, mystical, spiritual, talking to nature, spirits kind of stuff you got going on, this is not the place for it. Okay. This is about the brain and about the way we flow together in a human collective. This is real stuff. And that's a tough one, I know, because people are like, what? What? Isn't that all supernatural? And I say, you know what? I've seen all those things too. And you work it through and you go, you know what? Those are natural. And if we treat them as natural and know that they're natural and understand what makes them work and what prevents them from working, you can better interact with them. If you're just willy nilly waiting for something supernatural or, or if you yourself are intentionally sitting down, ah, oh, I'm going to connect with a higher self. You're connecting with something. But here's what I do. I don't connect with something and then come back and tell people, here is what you must do. I have connected with something. I am the one who can tell you that's crap, total crap. Okay. When you get to the core of this material, it is meant to empower the person on the path. That means you talk to your higher awareness. You don't listen to me tell you what I'm getting. I will not do that. I'm not going to sit there and listen to somebody tell me what they're getting from God. I'm going to leave that person. I'm going to call that person a nutcase and get away from them. When you teach people this material, it is a, it is to self empower. If you're talking to God, fine, keep it to yourself. That's not empowering people. My job is to find a way to help. I found a way to empower myself through this material. I empowered myself, not listening to somebody telling me, I've got God's answers for you. Get the hell out. Jesus Christ. I can't even fathom the, the emptiness it requires in the mind's capacity to process, to look at things, to evaluate, to compare and a mind like that is so simple that I go, oh, you need to do some thinking, processing. This is a place for that, thinking and processing. Okay, I wanted to say that because I just, I guess, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to be very firm about that with people. There is something going on. It's real. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. All right. Th that's a very firm thing with me. Very firm. I don't want to entertain people's personal psychic journeys. All right. And then one final thing, just to describe, I guess my, I, you know, I get pretty animated and people might be like, whoa, what are you so intense for about this stuff? It's because people come at you so much, so much, so much. That at some point you're like, look, no, knock it off. And somebody comes up at, at some point, you're like, oh my God, this is just forever all the time. At some point you want to just set up a big wall and say, no, this is not your place. <laughs> um, you know what I have in this material is totally experiential. You need to watch some videos. 
this i don't you got the wrong idea about the channel if if this is not a, this is this is trying to find the history of this material ah uh, yeah i feel very serious about it for various reasons but at the same time i have interacted with this material and changed my life no amount of anybody saying I talked to God, did a fucking thing for me. There's a point you're on your damn own, okay? This psychic stuff, who take it to the world. When you're ready to turn inward, you're going to find out something. Many are called, few are chosen. Welcome to the many called. I'll know when you get here, if you ever do. Only... Only a few people will. And you know what? You have to have the opportunity. What I am doing, th this stuff, was, you, people used to live through this. We don't anymore. I am re-discovering that. You need to, you need to watch. Yeah. All right, everybody. It, it takes a lot of time. They were living through this material. We are not. We are on the outside of it carrying it. Meanwhile, if we knew it well enough, we would know more about it. I have the time and the background and whatever the fortunate life experiences that were, that put me in a place where I was kind of destined to find this stuff. I'm on a course. Your course is not mine. <laughs> My mind goes inward and it goes to reality that we all share. What does a calling mean? It just means somebody that's turned inward. Do you know that every Buddhist, every Taoist, every person in the world that has gone through and found inner peace has already done this? I'm not doing anything different or new. I'm just rediscovering that it existed everywhere. Yeah, if you're still doing supernatural stuff, you're not you're not doing Buddhism or Taoism. You're not doing what's real. Okay. I'm not doing Buddhism or Taoism either, but if you wanted to follow a lifestyle that is going to help you heal without all of the bullshit, those two right there. Buddhism, Taoism, and not from a western source. <laughs> you got to be careful. It it morphs too. Make sure you go well well you can find um let me retract that. There are monasteries in the United States that are very Buddhist. You, you go close to there. Don't go, you know, to people like me teaching Buddhism. Don't listen to people like us. I don't teach Buddhism. What I do is I take the Dhammapada, interpret it, and find out, oh, this is the same thing that Jesus and Lao Tzu teach. So I go to the core. <laughs> but if you don't go to the core and you need something to believe in, then, yeah, those two I would recommend. Um... The difference is that they're taught right off the bat that, you know what, you come from and you return to the universe. There is no eternal life. There is no reincarnation. This is the life you live. The world is this way. We're evolving. There are some of us who are finding that long ago, 6,000 years ago, they knew the pathway to self-healing. And today, we don't know it. Instead, we're worshiping the wrapping paper. Okay, everybody. And, and you know what? It's not just worshiping the wrapping paper. They actually provide mental sanctity for people. However, at some point, people get out of that. They're no longer using it for the right thing. And again, what we have is a total abuse of the, the material. Thank you. Thank you, Christianity and the Catholic Church and Paul for telling people they only had to worship. Yeah, thank you for creating such a pile of crap. If I was raised in a Christian home or a Muslim home or a Hindu home, I would eventually left that as well. There are certain things that you just, your, your brain works a certain way that you go, this is unreasonable. <laughs> I'm not going to believe into something that is unreasonable that I can't reason through. You might believe in it when you're a kid because you don't have the reasoning skills. But as you develop them, you go, mm, this no longer makes sense. But not everybody, not everybody takes that path. I don't know if they lack reasoning skills or don't want to reason it through. I think a lot of people don't want to. Um, 
And I also look at I, I, if if you listen to a Christian who said, you know what, we're it doesn't matter all the denominations we believe in God, we're all going to heaven. I would look at all the Christians that I see around the world, and if you could gather them up and put them all in one place, the right wing ones would still want to control the liberal ones. There, there, there's not a. I, I look at the group of Christians and people that call themselves Christians and I say, I would never, ever want to spend any time with you, let alone an eternity. You imagine first six billion years in the chow line, standing in front of a couple of people that are all open carrying, pissed off because they can't kill the gay guy. Well, they did, but Jesus came and rose him from the dead again or whatever. Yeah, I don't think heaven sounds very good. <laughs> Reason it through. All right, everybody. <laughs> See you in the next video.